What's up, guys? Welcome back to King Cracking Sports. Mike here. Apologies for the setup, the lighting, all that shit. It's 7.30 in the morning here, so I don't really have the greatest lighting setup because a lot of my setup is based off of natural light. Whatever. You guys don't give a shit about that. Um, I missed yesterday's video uh, just because I needed an extra day to think about how to actually present my thoughts for this morning's video uh, about the NFC South draft grades because, oh boy, do I have some fucking thoughts. Um... If, like I said in every other video, if you haven't seen the ones before, links will be down in the description. Um, check those out whenever you can. Also, it was pointed out to me that sometimes my final grades may not make the most sense. Uh, someone pointed out to me, um, based on my grading s scale, that Miami should have been you know, rated higher than, than Buffalo. And they had the same grade, even though I gave Miami pick by pick, for the most part, higher grades. If you notice something like that... Please let me know because um, sometimes my you know I have a, a brain fart or brain slip while I'm while I'm working on these, and maybe my draft grades don't make a ton of sense at times. So please, if something happens and you notice that you know the, the final grade doesn't make a lot of sense, or you know if I gave the team mostly like. A's and I give you know like more A's than anything else and I give them a B let me know I'm more than willing to fix it I'm more than willing to take the blame helps me get better um and also uh you know I'm not immune to fucking up anyways I've wasted almost two fucking minutes so if again you guys haven't seen the videos uh going through every single pick uh grade the individual pick and then we give them a final grade think we're good on that front. So let's get started. Let's start with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Literally a team that while I was telling you about fucking up grades and final grades, I noticed I fucked up their final grade because it didn't make a lot of sense to me. All right, let's get into it. Top of the draft. They got Vita Vea, the defensive lineman out of Washington. This pick did not really make a ton of sense to me. Uh, Derwin James was still available and safety is a huge need for Tampa Bay. And why you would do that, I don't exactly know. Derwin James is, well, he's Derwin James. There wasn't any reason for him to fall. No one said that there was a medical flag. No one said that there was a character flag. So not really sure why he was still, you know, still there at 12. Um, Vita Vea is a good player. He was my 16th ranked player. And defensive lineman is a need. But I just I feel like it was maybe just a little bit of a reach, especially based off of who was still available. Uh, left tackle is another need in Connor Williams. I feel like I've mentioned Connor Williams about 900 times uh, in these videos. But yeah, um, it's a decent pick based off the value. Um, I gave it a B plus. I didn't hate the pick. I just, I thought that, you know, with Derwin James still being there, um, it would have been kind of a no-brainer pick, and they decided to go in a different direction than I did. I'm not saying that Vita Vey is a bad player. I'm not saying it was a bad pick. It just, to me, wasn't necessarily the best pick. So I gave it a B plus. And then pretty much after this, I love Tampa Bay's draft. Uh, 38, getting Ronald Jones out of USC. Listen, you let Doug Martin go. Which, I mean, Doug Martin, he's no longer the muscle hamster, not the Doug or not. He's just Doug. He's not that great, hasn't really been that great in years. There's not really much else as far as running backs on the roster. Your pick for a running back last year couldn't even make the roster because he couldn't understand the playbook and Jeremy McNichols. Ronald Jones, uh, the Texas Tesla, this dude's a, a, you know, a really, really electric playmaker. And out, you know, at the running back position to help take some of the pressure off Jameis, that's exactly what Tampa Bay needed. So, again, knocked this pick out of the park. He, they got him at 38. He was number 29 on my board. This is an A. At 53, they went and got the corner, MJ Stewart, out of North Carolina. Nice, solid player. Like uh, This is about where I thought he would go. He was number 50 on my board. Again, really solid player. Um, Brent Grimes is old. Vernon Hargraves probably works best in the slot. Um, you know, not saying that Vernon Hargraves isn't good, just size-wise. MJ Stewart, nice, big, tall corner with some ball skills. He was 50 on my board. They got him at 53. That's another A. Carlton Davis, who's kind of the same player as MJ Stewart. Uh, one of them, you know, apparently could be moving to safety. Just not sure which one. Uh, apparently, it, it, you know, the thought was, one, you know, that either or would move to uh, to safety. Carlton Davis was picked at 63. He was 46 on my board. This is another A. Um, 
you know, finally solidifying your outside corners in a division where you're going to fucking need some really good corners on the outside. Uh, yeah, another A for Carlton Davis. Alex Kappa, the offensive tackle, offensive guard, somewhere along the offensive line from Humboldt State. Really good player, uh, but the question marks around him were obviously, uh, you know, level of competition. But he had a really good senior bowl as well. Uh, they got him at 94. He was 117 on my board. A little bit of a reach in terms of, like, value, but when you're talking day, th- you, know, you know, round three, uh, that doesn't really matter as much. Um, so, like, a reach by, like, 20 in round three is not as bad as a reach, you know, of 20 um, in round one, obviously. Um, you'll see in a minute. But, yeah, um, really like the Alex Cap pick. 117 on the board, got him at 94. This is another A. Um, you know, everything you can do to project uh, to protect Jameis, because um, Jameis needs all the fucking help he can get, and that offensive line really outside of Ali Marpet and, like, DeMar Dotson has not been that great. Uh, so, again, just add to it, help Jameis out a bit. He's your franchise quarterback, needs a bit of protection. Otherwise, you might end up with an Andrew Luck situation if you don't protect him right. Uh, Jordan Whitehead, the safety out of uh, Pitt, Liked him as a player, wasn't really, like, in love with him, which is why he was ranked 132 on my board, but they got him at 117, which is, again, really good value. I gave him an A-. minus. They finally got that safety. Would have been higher if maybe they had taken, uh, like, a Deshaun Elliott, because I think they needed someone with a little bit better ball skills than than uh, Jordan Whitehead, and I would have liked the value a little bit more, and they probably would have gotten an A+, plus, you know, if they had gotten Deshaun Elliott, because it would have been about, you know, a great value pick. Um, you know, good player. You know, uh, uh, you know uh, for, for where they got him. This is a nice, solid A-. Uh, Justin Watson, uh, the receiver out of Penn, I didn't know who he was, so this is one of those uh, those cases where, because I can't make a, a true judgment call, I give it a C because I can't say whether or not the player's good or not, and it'll either work or it won't. Um, I don't know if there's a, if there's a grading difference uh, in Canada in the States. Uh, if someone would like to give me a hand with that, that would be great. Uh, because in Canada, a C is between, like, 60% and 70%. So, like, an A- is, you know, 80 to 85. A is 80... uh, Sorry. Yeah, A- is 80 to 85. Uh, A is 85 to 90. A plus is 90 plus. So that's how I'm grading these. Um, So I don't want people to think that I'm, like, you know... You know, if, if a lot of people are given an A plus and, or, or an A in the States and it's a different, an A means a different thing, uh, I don't know. So, again, just trying to explain everything I can. Uh, Jack Cicci at 202, this was great value. Of, he's just coming, he's just, of his biggest red flag was the fact that he's kind of injury prone. So this is, a, this is great value for him. They got him about a round after I thought that he would go. Um... They got him at 202. He was 171 on my board. Fits a need. He'll probably be a special teamer at first. Maybe he'll be able to, to come in on you know in certain packages uh, for the Bucks defense. I gave it another A. So the Bucks get B plus A A A A. Uh, so yeah, B plus four A's, an A minus, a C, and then another A. This is an overall grade of an A. I love uh, I love Tampa Bay's draft. Originally I gave them an A minus, and then while I was looking at it, I changed it to an A because I thought you know what. Um, I think I may have punished them a little bit too much for the Vita Vea pick first, you know, right off the bat, but I mean, they just nailed this draft. Moving on, the Carolina Panthers. Uh, this is a nice solid draft. Um, you know, was wondering where they were going to go and, uh, they made some good picks and they also made some confusing picks. So let's start off at the top of the board. DJ Moore, the wide receiver out of Maryland. Um, Calvin Ridley was still available and I not... I mean, I would have thought Calvin Ridley was was gone by then anyways. Hey, yo, because Baltimore, Ozzie Newsome, you know, put two and two together, but it didn't end up happening. Um, but I would have thought for sure that Calvin Ridley would have been the pick here. Not to say I don't like DJ Moore. DJ Moore was 25 on my board, so it's really good value. Um, the only reason I didn't give it an A+, plus was because I just, I would have rather seen Ridley in Carolina uh, and he probably would have been a little bit more of an impact, you know, impactful rookie for them than DJ Moore will. Uh, but I gave it an A. Dante Jackson, the corner out of LSU, um, at 55. He was 71 on my board. I thought he was pretty good. Um, you know, 
nothing nothing like too special like really really fast really really you know speedy you know has some good hands but can also get really grabby at times in coverage i gave it a b plus um you know obviously that secondary does need a little bit of help um because james bradbury is still when it all comes down to it like a fifth round pick um you know that that secondary doesn't have a lot of high picks invested in it and finally getting some is a really good idea for you know for the Panthers there. Uh, Rashawn Golden is a pick I did not like out of Tennessee. So they got him at 85. He was 158 on my board. I thought this was a reach by a couple of rounds. I would have rather seen them go with J.C. Jackson, uh, the corner out of Maryland, who ended up going undrafted, uh, and I still have yet to figure out why. Um, but I like J.C. Jackson a hell of a lot more than I like Rashawn Golden. Golden, uh, I think, is more known for just flipping off the Alabama crowd than anything he actually did at Tennessee. Not really a great player. can get kind of lost in coverage. Not the greatest ball skills either. Um, honestly, I was wondering whether maybe he'd be best off at safety when I was watching him. So, again, don't really understand the pick. I gave it a C+. It's, it's not a horrible pick, but just not one that I was a fan of. One I was a fan of for them was the next pick, first pick of uh, day three, which was Ian Thomas, the tight end out of Indiana. I thought he might have already been, you know, uh, picked. I would have thought going into the draft he would have been a late day, you know, day two guy, um, kind of in that like seventy-five to one hundred range or eighty to one hundred range, I guess. Um, you know, really solid player, kind of a one-year wonder though, but not really anything to do with him per se, more due to the fact that uh, Indiana's quarterbacks suck. Um, but yeah, really good player. Um, you know, kind of that new age tight end that everyone wants to get that matchup nightmare tight end. Carolina was able to get him in round four. It's a good replacement for the future for Greg Olson. I can't really find much wrong with it. I gave it an A. Uh, Marquise Haynes, the pass rusher out of Ole Miss. Listen, this guy is small. Um, he's like 225, 230, uh, you know, but he's an edge rusher. Um, also, he's just not that good. Let's call a spade a spade. He's just not that good. I had him graded at uh, 230, so definitely an undrafted free agent grade. Um, didn't like the value for the pick. I gave it a C-. minus. I'm going to lump their next two picks together because they're both linebackers that I hadn't scouted. Jermaine Carter Jr. out of Maryland and Andre Smith out of uh, North Carolina. Neither made my board because I just didn't. I don't have time to watch. 350, 400, you know, um, you know, players like, you know, a lot of people in media do. I'm a full-time university student as well. Uh, Andre Smith was someone I was trying to, to find film on. I didn't know who Jermaine Carter Jr. was at all. Uh, so they both get C's. They get the C treatment for me not knowing, uh, you know, anything about them as players. Kendrick Norton uh, was probably my favorite, you know, value pick for uh, Carolina outside of DJ Moore. Um, they got him at 242, so one of the last picks of the draft. I had him graded at uh, 163 overall, so that's an A+, plus because they got a couple rounds of value tacked onto it. Really solid player, Star Latulale left. I think Kendrick Norton might be better than Star Latulale, to be honest with you. I gave it an A+. Plus. So Carolina gets an A, B+, plus, C+, uh, C plus, A, C-, minus, C, C, A+. Plus. I ended up giving them a B+, plus overall. I like their draft. I like the way that that franchise is, is moving in the right direction. Um, no longer is it going to be Cam having to throw to just a bunch of scrubs and Calvin Benjamin, and Calvin Benjamin's not even there anymore. I think DJ, uh, DJ Moore is a great receiver. Would have liked to see it be Calvin Ridley instead, but overall, not too much that I can complain about. Next up, Atlanta. Um, you know, a team that my Philadelphia Eagles beat in, in the playoffs, and when we did the live stream uh, mock draft a couple, you know, a couple weeks ago, I legitimately didn't remember it. Um, but Atlanta, I mean, they're a perennial playoff team for a reason. It's a lot due to, you know, due to how they handle the draft. Um, let's start off top of the you know, of the draft. Calvin Ridley falls to them at 26. No one really saw this type of fall coming. Um I would have thought that if they wanted Calvin Ridley that bad, they would have traded up for him, too. Uh, he just fell into their lap. This is an A+. Calvin Ridley was number 15 on my board. Um, the getting him at 26, especially when a ton of teams that needed a wide receiver like uh, Baltimore and um, the Cowboys passed him up. And then you see Carolina in your division pass him up to go with a different wide receiver. 
Uh, this is extremely lucky, but this is an extremely good pick because I didn't overthink it. Calvin Ridley fell into our hands. Sure, we've got you know uh, Julio Jones, which Twitter exploded after this pick because everyone thought Julio Jones was going to be traded. Uh, but yeah, Julio Jones, you know now uh, Calvin Ridley, Muhammad Sanu, got good tight ends. Tevin Coleman out of the backfield, uh, Devontae Freeman out of the backfield. There's just, I mean, that offense is going to be dangerous for the now $100 million guaranteed contract of Matt Ryan. Second round, Isaiah Oliver out of Colorado. How the fuck was he still available? Seriously, I have no idea how he was still available. I would have thought at least Carolina would have gotten him, you know, three picks earlier, but they didn't. Um... Isaiah Oliver was number 19 on my board. Uh, if you guys saw, a lot of my mock drafts had um, Seattle going with Isaiah Oliver in the teens without trading. Uh, wow. I thought that he was going to be gone with Seattle's first-round pick even after they traded back. Um, yeah, this is another A-plus, guys. Uh at least, you know, a round and a half, essentially, of value. Number 19 overall player. Uh, my last first round grade, and you're getting them towards the end of the second. This is great value. Deidre Sinat, the defensive tackle out of South Florida. Didn't get to watch any tape on him, so it's a C. Ito Smith, the running back out of Southern Miss. This was my second lowest graded player. Uh, he was number 267 on my board. Um, did not like the pick at 126. Why he was picked there, I don't know. There were a lot better running backs still available. Russell Gage, uh, the receiver out of uh, LSU, didn't get to watch him. Uh, hadn't heard his name until about two days before the draft, just not enough time. And then Foye Oluokun, the linebacker out of Yale, same thing. So yes, uh, as much as I really didn't like the uh, lat, you know, you know, or can't make a judgment call, sorry, on... Uh, the three, you know, the three guys who I hadn't watched before, I didn't hold it against uh, the Panthers in this situation. So they got, the, you know, they still got their C's. The Edo Smith pick got a D. Basically, what I did with, yeah, you know, with the Falcons was I added up two A pluses and a D to figure out what that would be. It's a B plus. I also wasn't going to hold, you know, you know, give Atlanta any ill will when I loved their first two picks and they get an A plus and they knock it out of the fucking park. So, yeah, B-plus for Atlanta, really solid draft. Thomas Dimitrov making Canada really proud of these picks. All right. Now, New Orleans was always going to be the last team I talked about because they had the best, you know, uh, record in the, you know, in the division. They went for the furthest in the playoffs. It also just happens that I hate their draft so much that I need, I felt I needed to save it for last. What the actual fuck? Like, seriously. Who made these picks? It couldn't have been Sean Payton. It couldn't have been the same person that picked last year's class. New Orleans had the best class bar none last year. When you get Lattimore, and you get, um, you know, uh, Von Bell, you get, um, why am I drawing a blank on his name? I know, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Alvin Kamara, you know, like, how do you go from that draft to this draft? This draft made no sense. They addressed virtually no fucking needs. They drafted cute picks. You're not in a position to make cute picks. You're trying to get Drew Brees another Super Bowl while he's maybe got one or two years left. There's no planning for the future. Let's just, let, let's get into this. So... I was watching the draft on delay. I was watching the Raptors game uh, right before it. I had the draft recording, and then I just watched the recording. Skipped a lot of the of the Mike Mayock rambling bullshit. Skipped commercials and basically tried to just go pick, pick, pick. So I see that New Orleans is traded up. So I don't. I I I don't fast forward or anything. I've already seen. Four quarterbacks go off the board. Drew Brees is 39 years old. Put two and two together, this has to be Lamar Jackson. Sean Payton came out and said, you know, before the draft, he said he loved Lamar Jackson. And that he would know exactly what he was going to do. 
if Lamar Jackson fell into their lap. Well, he didn't exactly fall into their lap. They traded up from 27 to 14. They gave up a future first. All the writing is on the wall that this is a quarterback. I started typing it in already on the spreadsheet that this was Lamar Jackson because, well, who the fuck else would you trade up for and give a future first for? You don't give a future first unless you're getting the quarterback. And Goodell comes to the podium and says it's Marcus Davenport, the edge rusher out of UTSA, and I couldn't fucking believe it. I could not believe it because what the fuck are you doing? Why? Why are you drafting the rawest, most useless day one you know, pick in the entire draft? You know, a lot of people thought I was really rough on the Niners last year for giving Solomon Thomas a really low grade. And in fact, if you look at my grade for Solomon Thomas last year, I gave it a D minus because he was the third pick and he was a thirty-eight. You know, he was the thirty-eighth player on my board. I had to give this an even worse grade because this pick was awful. It was atrocious. It was borderline cancerous. Mark, you trade up, and of course, that's another reason why I, I just, I'm destroying this pick. You trade up from 27 to 14. You give up a future first when you have a 39-year-old quarterback. I think a lot of people assume that the Saints are going to be exactly where they are next year, and that very well may be the case. But let's say you don't do as well as you did last year. You're not going to get the 27th pick or the 25th pick, wherever they may fall in the playoffs. Let's say something really bad happens, a freak injury, or you know what? The Saints just don't play well this, you know, this year. Let's say you miss the playoffs. You end up as like the 15th, you know, the, you, know you end up getting like, the 15 pick. Maybe something goes horrendously wrong and you're picking top 10. And Breeze retires or whatever. Now you're fucked. Because you don't have that first round pick. Because you traded up to get fucking Marcus Davenport. The 98th ranked player on my board. Someone who in no way is, is ready to contribute this year. I don't care what the hell the media tells you about how he's a 10 sack a year guy. He's so, you know, he's so athletically gifted. If he just learns how to play football, he's going to be amazing. Listen to that sentence again. This is a poor man's Deion Jordan. And Deion Jordan wasn't good. The reason I say poor man's Deion Jordan is Deion Jordan at least had production at a bigger school. Marcus Davenport had almost zero production in, in the fucking Conference USA, all right? He had nothing in CUSA, and then he's talked about as a first-round pick based off of traits and athleticism. Great. He can't play football. Um, and then he went to the Senior Bowl, and the first three days he was – being ragdolled by everyone else there because the guy from UTSA just doesn't belong. And then on on the last day, he starts playing okay. And they're like, oh, see? See, he just needed time to get used to it. No, he probably started learning snap, and just, you know, snap counts and everything. So this doesn't, this is a god-awful pick. I gave this an F. This was awful. This was the worst pick possibly in the entire fucking draft. Maybe the Jordan Akins pick is worse. But... I mean, third round tight end, yeah, third round tight end pick that was a UDFA, that's bad. First round pick that's a borderline day two pick, that's awful. That is fucking awful. I didn't even tear the, the, the Ravens as much of a new asshole when they get Hayden Hurst, who was ranked in the 100s at 25. No, no, no. This is awful because it's horrendous value. You trade it up and you traded a first round pick to go get someone who is not going to help your team contribute next year. He's not better than Holy Kikaha. And you trade it up to get his replacement, and I guarantee you Kikaha is going to start over him. Marcus Davenport is absolute bust factor, times 10, atrocious pick. I've spent like five minutes just talking about this pick alone. That's how much I fucking hate this pick. Traquan Smith was the pick at uh, 91. Um... And he was graded at 141 on my board. Not the best value there either. Gave it a B. Would have rather seen a Simi Cobbs go or a Marcel Aitman. Those guys at least were higher on my board. Uh, but, you know, Saints gonna Saint, apparently. 
Um, then their next four picks are guys that weren't on my board and weren't that I saw on really anyone else's board. Media-wise, Rick Leonard, the offensive tackle out of Florida State, uh, I knew who he was. Didn't think he was in this year's draft class until they announced the pick. Natrell Jamerson out of Wisconsin. I don't know. Cameron Moore, the corner out of Boston College. Still better corners available. Not on my board, but, I mean, just look at anyone else's. Boston Scott, the white, uh, the running back out of Louisiana Tech. This guy's really small. He's like 5'6". Um, I guess he's going to be like a Sproles for them. Not on my board. Hadn't heard of him until the pick was made. Their best pick was made at 245 with Will Clapp. 245 overall, 106 on my board. I gave it an A+. Uh, just because it was the only really good value pick they made the entire draft. Um, and you know what? Will Clapp's grade has actually really helped curve their draft uh, in a positive direction. And I've never seen it before where players who I had no idea who they were, which meant they got a C, actually bell curved their you know a, t- a team's grade up because their natural picks were you know, you know the picks that I did know of were just that bad. So let's review the Saints: um, an F, a B, four straight C's, and an A plus. I gave them a C. Uh, this was a bad draft for them. This was this was nonsensical. Uh, I'm still a week later, not sure how to tackle this draft from them. That's going to do it for now, guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell a friend to tell another friend. I'll see you in a couple of hours where we'll talk about uh, the AFC West. Um, and then tomorrow we'll finish it off with the NFC West. Uh, And then I am going to enjoy a nice vacation.